Welcome to the Root Cause Revolution podcast with functional and integrative nurse nutritionist and energy medicine practitioner, Audrey Christie. Hi, friends. Welcome to episode 298 of the Root Cause Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Audrey, and today we're talking about fibromyalgia. Specifically, we're going to talk about root causes of fibromyalgia and how you can get started to get on your healing journey. Before we dive in, I want to take a quick second to introduce myself. Again, I'm Audrey. I am a root cause clinician, and I specialize in helping you to stop masking symptoms and start healing your body. So if you are done with band-aids, if you are done with masking symptoms and you are ready for real solutions to your symptoms, your chronic illness, your autoimmune issues, I can help. You are in the right place. All right, let's talk about fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is something that's been around for a long, long time. And in fact, people it's it, for a while people would um people meaning conventional medical practitioners would put the label on any collection of symptoms with widespread pain that they couldn't find a cause for right um and so a diagnosis of fibromyalgia tends to give you the impression that aha the doctors have found your problem and understand it <laughs> But actually, all that it means is that all their other tests have come back negative. They don't really know what's going on. They have to apply a diagnosis code for it for insurance purposes. So that's what they do. And then they go on to try a shopping list of drugs and therapies to try and relieve the symptoms. Um, And it may sound hard to believe, but it's actually right there in plain English on the American College of Rheumatology website. Um, We do know that scientists have found a much better understanding of what's going on with fibromyalgia and natural health practitioners, naturopaths, even some chiropractors that specialize this in this sort of thing have found better answers for people to um, treat the person <laughs> and not the symptoms. And in conventional medicine, medication is used to cover up a per- person's symptoms. And before I go too much further into conventional medicine and all of those things, please know that I am not against conventional medicine whatsoever. In fact, um, I do believe that conventional medicine is critical for us to be able to stay alive. So if you have an emergency, if you have a broken leg and your femur is sticking through your leg, you need to go to a doctor at the emergency room at the hospital and have conventional medicine, medical care. If you have a life-threatening infection, you need to go to the, the hospital or the doctor and have antibiotics for that. If just about anything else, if it's not life-threatening, um, then there's a chance that you don't need uh, conventional medicine at all. We know that conventional medicine isn't great at um, it's not really even great at masking the symptoms, but it's certainly not great at getting to the root cause. Conventional medicine is sick care. And what we're talking about here is health care, wellness care, right? Um, so what happens with fibromyalgia in particular is that medication is generally given to cover up a person's symptoms. And so when a person with fibromyalgia stops taking the medication, symptoms return. Sometimes they return worse. And if you've listened to this podcast for long, then you know that uh, one of the greatest predictors of having a chronic illness is already having a chronic illness, right? So if you have one chronic illness, one autoimmune disease, and you simply mask the symptoms, then there is uh, a really good, strong prediction that you will have a secondary and even a tertiary or a fourth or a fifth one on top of that. Um, traditional drug therapy for fibromyalgia in particular is a dead end. It's a dead end. It's not going to help. You will um, end up having, you know, one, four, five, ten different drugs to put you asleep, to wake you up, to calm you down, one after the other that cause all kinds of different side effects. It is just not a, a way to live. Um, or a way to heal your body, a way a way to heal your body. So today what I want to talk about is some of the underlying root causes of fibromyalgia that a lot of people don't know about, and therefore they don't recover from fibromyalgia, and I don't want that to be you. Um, so we're going to talk some of them in generalities, but we're also going to talk about specifics 
that can help you to heal your body and, and know that you didn't get to the point where you're experiencing the symptoms of fibromyalgia overnight. So this is, it tends to be a, you know, longer journey to health and wellness. So some of the non commonly known, <laughs> let's say that, uh, non-conventional medicine causes, root causes of fibromyalgia are, um, gluten intolerance, you know, gluten is always referred to as um, the big masquerader. It's been associated with over 55 diseases. Uh, And interestingly, gluten intolerance, not gluten allergy, those are two different things. Gluten sensitivity is what we're talking about here, not a true allergy. But those symptoms rarely manifest as digestive issues, but they tend to show up as other neurological issues like sleep disturbances, fatigue, depression, uh, even behavioral issues in kids, cognitive impairment, and pain. Um, And so gluten intolerance is one of those uh, root causes of fibromyalgia, not really root causes, one of the causes. We're going to talk about the roots of these issues here in a minute. But the second one is candida overgrowth. So candida is a type of yeast, um, and it really, it doesn't take much to have candida thrive in the small intestines. And then once it's thriving in the small intestines, it can overgrow and start to break down the walls of the intestines. So that is where the problem um, happens to arise when those um, overgrowths penetrate into the bloodstream, they release toxic matter into the system, and then you have symptoms like pain, fatigue, and brain fog. Um, Almost every person that I've worked with that has had fibromyalgia has had candida overgrowth. Um, Another one is nutrient deficiencies, and these kind of go hand in hand. So nutrient deficiencies, gluten intolerance, candida overgrowth, um, SIBO or leaky gut, uh, all of these kind of go hand in hand because they are direct uh, digestive issues. So nutrient deficiencies, um, oftentimes people with fibromyalgia are deficient in magnesium, vitamin D, and vitamin B12. Uh, And so There are even some patients that simply boosting magnesium levels completely reverses the condition. But oftentimes those things don't occur alone in a vacuum. So it's unlikely that you're deficient in magnesium and have no other root causes as well. When we think about fibromyalgia, when we think about any um, collection of symptoms or a diagnosis or a label for a disease process, you have to remember that we are looking at a tree with multiple roots. So if the diagnosis is fibromyalgia, there are lots of root causes. And so I'm kind of throwing them out there for you just so that you might think, oh, wait, that might be me. Oh, wait, that might be me. Because all of these things really come into the picture of health and rarely do any of these things occur alone. Another digestive issue that is a cause of fibromyalgia is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. Um, also, you know, that's part of leaky gut. Um, but when the, the bacteria in your gut gets out of balance, um, it can be a result of antibiotics. It can be a result of other prescription medications. It can be a result of a sugar rich diet. When this happens, you can lose your ability to both digest and absorb particular nutrients, particularly B12. Um, Also, if you have low stomach acid, you can't absorb B12. So anyone diagnosed with fibromyalgia or a similar chronic disease often needs to fix the gut uh, because it becomes a vicious cycle and everything is so closely related. Um, Other often overlooked causes of fibromyalgia are thyroid issues, right? Right. Many people who have thyroid issues don't even know they have them, okay? About 90% of people with thyroid issues have hypothyroidism and don't they don't even know that they are in that hypothyroid category because the, the lab results, when you're looking at labs, a lot of people don't know this. When you're looking at lab results and you see that normal range in that column, that normal range is two things that you really have to understand and be wary of. Number one, it is... <laughs> simply um, whether or not acute action needs to be taken. So whether or not you have a lab range, a lab out of that range is just telling that professional whether or not you need an intervention right now. Like you need to leave the office with the medication or if you're in the hospital, you need to get a medication. The second thing that is, those numbers come from the averages that the lab gets. So they take a all the numbers that they get and they give the averages there and that's the quote unquote healthy range for someone because that's what most people that that lab sees or most humans um, that, you know, the lab see, that is what they're at. That's where the averages lie, right? And so 
Does that sound like that is a picture of health? No. So we have our lab ranges. Are you going to die? And then we have, and I'm being a little dramatic there, but are you intimately ill? <laughs> or do you have the functional range, which is the range that is op optimal health, the range that you don't have symptoms in, the range that you can function normally in. Okay. So those are important things to think about there. Um, so all of that was in regard to thyroid. So when assessing thyroid issues, you have to focus on that optimal range and not the standard reference range. So just because your thyroid lab is in the standard reference range does not mean you are symptom free. It does not mean that you are not having fatigue, sleep issues, depression, and brain fog. So those are all things to consider. Um, another one is adrenal fatigue. And I actually taught a class in the Root Cause Revolution membership masterclass this morning on adrenal fatigue. So chronic stress, whether it is real stress or not, is a major cause of adrenal fatigue. And oftentimes adrenal fatigue is misdiagnosed as fibromyalgia because guess what? Adrenal fatigue brings chronic pain. Um, it brings uh, vitamin deficiencies, food intolerances. Uh, it brings fatigue. It brings exhaustion. It brings slip, sleep issues, all of those things. But guess what? It's really easy to fix and it doesn't require an ever escalating amount of medications. Other things to consider is a glutathione deficiency. Um, glutathione is a master antioxidant in the body and it is super important for the body's detoxification product. So it gets recycled in the body unless toxic matter exceeds the amount um, or the body lacks enzymes required to produce and recycle glut glutathione. So um, taking precursors to glutathione like milk thistle or NAC can help with that department. And a glutathione deficiency, big symptom of that is fatigue. Uh, another one is mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are, are toxic mold. So about 25% of the population carries a gene that makes people susceptible to the detrimental effects of mold. Um, mold testing doesn't account for mycotoxins but levels of mold spores only. So mycotoxins could be a real problem for you if you have a fibromyalgia diagnosis. Definitely something that we can look into. Um, and the last one that I want to talk about before I really dive into the root causes, um, because all of these are causes, but not root causes, um, is MTHFR mutations. And MTHFR is an enzyme required for methyl methylation. It's a really important part of the metabolic process. And so during this process, both folate and folic acid are converted into the active forms so the body can utilize them. Anyone with MTHFR uh, mutation lacks the ability or has a far less ability to methylate and detoxify toxins like lead, like mercury, and some other heavy metals. Um, the more mutations a person has on this gene, the higher their requirement is for folinic acid, for methyl B6, methyl B12, so that you can maintain normal detoxification processes in your body. If you have MTHFR mutation, it is critical for you to be managing the toxins in your environment and that are, uh, your body is exposed to as well. Now, let's talk about the roots of all of those things, right? We talked about some, some causes, some um, causes that you might not have heard of before, but at the root of all of these things, we have some basics. Um, there are triggers that trigger the things that we just talked about, the causes, and those fall into a few categories. Number one, energetic disturbances. Now, this is often overlooked in conventional medicine, but energy, call it chi, call it soul, call it spirit, call it whatever that you would like to call it, but it's the life inside of your skin suit. <laughs> and so it's out of the meat, meat and skin sack that is your body, right? It is the, um, the, the thing that animates your meat suit, your human suit. Um, so dis-ease in the body always starts way out in your energetic field long before it manifests in your three-dimensional world, in your human suit. So some of the most common energetic disturbances include stress, EMF, uh, uh, EMF sensitivity, that is. Um, it could be an emotional trauma. It could be a physical trauma. Sometimes a trigger can be something as simple as you just feel responsible for all the problems in the world, right? You might be carrying the world on their shoulders. You might be overwhelmed by life. Um, you might have had conditional love uh, in childhood or as an adult. And so all of those things can cause, those are examples of energetic disturbances um, that happen in your field. 
Now, the second thing is gut issue. And we talked a little bit about nutrient deficiency and SIBO and some candida and some other things that happen in our gut. But what you have to recognize is it's widely accepted and known that the immune system and your gut work very, very close together. So the majority of your immune system lives in your digestive system. So when the digestive system isn't happy, your immune system isn't happy. When your digestive system is impaired, it has a direct impact on the immune system. Now, this could be in the form of, like we talked about, nutrient deficiencies. Uh, it could be in the form of bacterial overgrowth. It could be in the form of yeast overgrowth. And these things come from consuming a diet based on ultra-processed foods, uh, consuming foods that you are allergic or sensitive to. These come from alcohol abuse, and they come from long-term medication dependence, and that's you know over-the-counter or prescription. The third thing is infections. Now, this could be infections that you know you had, like officially, like a strep infection or even a viral infection, a cold or the flu. It could be something you didn't know you had, as is often the case with something like Epstein-Barr or even Lyme disease or Lyme disease's many co-infections. So if you take something um, like fibromyalgia, there are over 20 viruses that are associated with the onset of fibromyalgia. Uh, rheumatoid, for example, has been linked to Lyme disease. So if you don't address these root causes, you don't get better. You can mask the symptoms, but unless you address it, you don't get better. The Another root cause is parasites. And I know everyone, every time I say parasites, people get all oogly googly and grossed out. But almost everyone has parasites of some kind, right? I hate to break it to you. Um, I, I, when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients or clients in my Root Cause Revolution membership, phase two, we're getting rid of parasites. And you would not believe the pictures that I get of, you, of what comes out of people. Uh, I had somebody that sneezed and had a parasite fly out of her nose and her tissue. Um, I've ha seen, you know, poo pictures where people have dug parasites out of their out of their poo during the parasite um, phase. I mean, like there's been some interesting stories. And you might be thinking, well, where do we get those parasites? They come from dirt. They come from our food. If you have pets that you love, like we do, even if you don't have farm pets, we have farm pets, so we have extra parasite burden uh, around here. But we also have, you know, dogs, two dogs and a cat, um, and they carry parasites as well. Uh, and then the last one is toxins. Um, toxins are everywhere in our environment. The majority of women, which fibromyalgia major affects women like nine out of 10 times, but the majority of women apply and absorb about 80 toxins before they even step foot out of the door in the morning. Uh, and so that is a huge, huge problem. And no, you're not safe if you don't wear makeup. There are toxins in your water, your furniture, your laundry detergent, your dryer sheets, your clothes, the air. It's really difficult to manage to stay away from them all, but if you can manage to stay away from what you can, then you can avoid things like heavy metals, BPA, mercury, and mold. And then the second thing you do is really work on those drainage pathways so that you have, so that you're able to allow your body to get rid of the stuff it's supposed to, to get rid of stuff like it's supposed to. Our bodies have beautiful drainage systems, but they get clogged up because sometimes that toxin overload impedes us. Sometimes we have genetic reasons that toxins um, pull the trigger on, and then that stops us from being able to uh, drain the toxins out that we need to. Um, so hopefully that helps you get some ideas on fibromyalgia, root causes of fibromyalgia, what you can do about it. Um, if you're wanting specific instruction on what to do about it, my very first recommendation to you is work on those energy and drainage pathways. I have a short energy and drainage pathway course that you can grab in the show notes on whatever podcast provider. I think it's like, it's like less than a copay. My copay is 50 bucks and this class is $35, I believe. Um, so you can get it. It's a class. You watch it. Feel free to ask questions. We can also work together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can do that right there in the show notes as well. Grab a one-on-one -on -one, uh, mini case review appointment or a full consultation. And then lastly, I'll invite you into the Women's Wellness Circle, which is our free private Facebook group. Um, right now in 2023, we're going through and adding a habit every month. Our first habit was drinking the appropriate amount of water. And then our second habit starts this month today, actually, if you're listening to this on Wednesday, uh, and I'm not going to spoil it. So you'll have to wait until it comes out in the Facebook group. So I hope you'll join us there. That link is also in the uh, show notes. That does it for me today, friends. We will have 
our next uh, episode will come out on Friday, and it is an Ask Audrey episode. I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the Root Cause Revolution podcast. Be sure and subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Ratings and reviews are always appreciated.